Hello, everyone, and welcome to French River Lutheran Church this Sunday. Um, we all thank you very much for your offerings that you have given. Um, we use them in many ways around the church. Uh, also, not just monetary offerings, but we're also looking for service offerings as well. There's lots to do around here. Um, even though the sanctuary isn't holding services, um, there's lots of upkeep that uh, still needs to happen. And we ask for your help in, in any way that you can provide um, for the, uh, your regular weekly offering. Uh, if you could mail that to the church, put it in the lower box or send it to um, over the on, online giving, that'd be great. Thank you all. Good morning. Uh, today we're continuing on with our season of creation focus uh, for the service. Um, our introduction today comes from Archbishop Linda Nichols of the Anglican Church of Canada. Uh, and the verse uh, she's focusing on is uh, from Exodus 17. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the many people may drink. And she goes on to say, as a settler Canadian, I am accustomed to the ready availability of fresh, clean water at any moment on any day. I have also lived in the Himalayas of India where the provision of water was unpredictable day to day and what was available had to be boiled thoroughly first because it was not safe to drink. Like the Israelites in the desert, I readily grumbled and complained when it was not available. This became a lesson for me in the dangers of the privileges that I had enjoyed and took for granted in Canada. I became acutely aware that the lack of water was a daily reality for millions of people and that clean water was even more scarce. So I, became, so I also became aware of those who profit from the bottling and selling of a resource that is a necessity of life and a gift of the Creator. The ongoing protection and sharing of clean water are part of our baptismal vocation to love neighbor as self and to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth. Just as Moses followed God's direction in order to offer water to the Israelites in the desert, we are called to partner with those protecting and sharing water. From joining the advocacy of Adam Peltier, a young indigenous water protector, to the relief efforts of the Red Cross, to our daily habits, to conserve and protect water in our community, we are called to share in the provision of God's gift of water now and for future generations. And her prayer thought. Creator of all, stir in us the passion to share the living water of the gospel as we also protect and share the waters of your creation to nourish all creatures. Amen. Welcome everyone to French River Lutheran Church on this 17th Sunday after Pentecost. We celebrate outside today. It's been such a great week, a great beginning to fall that we couldn't help but go outside. So I hope that you were able to get outside and enjoy the, the uh, weather like I did this past week. There's a lot of people to thank to put this service together and our tech team is doing a great job of bringing us worship every Sunday. So thank you, tech team. Um, another point I want to mention is Decora Covenant Church. They graciously gave us permission to use the um, sermon that you'll hear later today. It was first broadcast by them on May 10th, and they had a sermon before that which tied in with this sermon that you're about to hear. So there, when you hear a reference to that, don't be too confused. Um, what else? Oh, the sermon was written at a time when the speaker found out about a lot of changes, as we all did, and how we have to kind of roll with them now. And we'll just get through this together. So thank you for joining us today. If you don't have a bulletin handy, I encourage you to grab one. 
uh, if you don't know how to get one, you could email the church office, and that email is frlc5310 at gmail.com. And a weekly reminder can be emailed to you along with a bulletin. You could stop by outside the church office. There's a cart outside the lower door, and bulletins are placed in there. Or, um, let's see, how else? Oh, if you want one mail to your home, why not contact the church office? We could mail one out to you. That could be arranged, I'm sure. So we begin today with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be assured that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. We continue with the prayer of the day as we pray together. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings and give us your grace to overcome them. When confusion enters and scatters us, let the trumpet sound and gather us in the spirit to worship and remember the Lord. With you, Lord, nothing is impossible. All praise and glory be to Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I have something this morning that I think most of you will probably recognize. These are called post-it notes. If you need to leave a note for someone or help you to remember something, you can just write on a post-it note and stick it someplace. So for instance, I have one on the door here, take out the trash, and McCray has a post-it note and it says, feed the pets. Those are important things that we need to do. So it's helpful to remind them on a, uh, remind ourselves on a post-it note. And did you know that these post-it notes were invented right here in Minnesota by, um, by a company uh, called 3M? And they've been around for over 100 years. Anyway, they had a scientist there named Dr. Spencer Silver, and he was working to try to improve the glue that was on scotch tape. 3M also makes uh, scotch tape. Well, it wasn't going very well, his ideas. Um, it would stick at first, this glue, but then it easily pulled off. And he thought this new glue formula was a failure. You might say he was stuck. Well, something was creating opposition or a roadblock to his plan. His idea wasn't going very well and he decided to share it with others within the company. Maybe somebody else could help him out. So another scientist named Art Fry started trying the new glue in different ways, and the rest is history. They came up with the post-it note. So what started out to be a really big failure that seemed to be going nowhere for 3M, it turned out to be one of their greatest successes. Sometimes the things that we try to do in our lives or the plans we make don't turn out the way we thought they would. We were just trying to do what we thought was best. And instead of giving up, what we really need to do is to turn it over to someone else. You know, if things aren't going our way, we need to turn it over to God. Maybe we know where we wanna go, but we just can't seem to get there. There's something in our way. If we just put our faith and trust in Jesus, he will direct our steps. He can turn what we think is a failure into a success. We can do this when we remember the Lord by praying to him. So if you take your bulletin, there's a prayer for children, and we can pray that now together. Dear Lord, 
help us to remember that things which create opposition, roadblocks, or failures can be turned into successes when we trust in you. It's not our plan, but our builder, Jesus, who gives us confidence. And to that we say, Amen. Our service continues with a reading from Nehemiah. Now when Sambalot heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he mocked the Jews. He said in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore things? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish it in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burnt ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, That stone wall they are building, any fox going up on it would break it down. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their taunt back on their own heads, and give them over as a plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt, and do not let their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have hurled insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and the gaps were beginning to be closed, they were very angry and all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. So we prayed to our God and set a guard as protection against them day and night. But Judah said, the strength of the burden bearers is failing and there is too much rubbish so that we are unable to work on the wall. And our enemies said, they will not know or see anything before we come upon them and kill them and stop the work. When the Jews who lived near them came, they said to us 10 times, from all the places where they live, they will come up against us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. After I looked these things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your kin, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. And I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is great and widely spread out and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Rally to us wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet. Our God will fight for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Even though I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. I can see a light that is coming for a heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes We'll live to know you're here on the earth And I will fear no evil My God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then 
shall I fear? What men shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, never let go, Lord, never let go of me. And I can see a light. That is coming for a heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no. Never let go, every high and every low. No, never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it from human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by which authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and did the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But then he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into heaven, or going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For God came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with prayers of intercession. You're invited to respond to each petition with your mercy is great. God, because we have known your love, we come to you with confidence, offering our prayers for the church, the world you love, and all those in need. You're a God of compassion and love. Time after time, we've experienced your care and provision, and time after time, you've answered our prayers and met our needs often in ways we could never have dreamed possible, but with you, all things are possible. We praise you for your faithful love towards us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You are a God of creation and life. Teach us to preserve and sustain what you created. We pray for those suffering the effects of recent natural disasters. 
We pray for the regions of our world caught up in violence and threats of violence. We praise you for uniting us as brothers and sisters in Christ to love your creation and to love one another. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You are a God of joy and peace. When we feel overwhelmed or face opposition, we are grateful for your presence. We pray for those who are ill, those who are in pain, those undergoing treatment, and those without access to proper medical care. Let their hearts not be troubled or afraid. We praise you that by the powers of your Holy Spirit, they may abound with hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You are a God of promise and victory. We give thanks for the saints who have gone into your kingdom ahead of us. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. We praise you for fighting for us and calling us to your purpose. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, give us courage to follow faithfully and with integrity, with actions that bear witness to the words we speak, and worship that overflows into our daily tasks and relationships, so that our lives may will bring glory and honor to you, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. An offering prayer for our time, talents, and treasures. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask for your blessing on the gifts given to us, that they may be a means of carrying out the work of your kingdom in this world. Amen. Let us pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing and live the dismissal. The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace amen amen Remember the Lord. Thanks be to God.